People tend to have a lot of feelings about the Lord of the Rings movies. Admittedly, I am one of those people. But generally, I found that some of us really, really love the Peter Jackson adaptations of the Lord of the Rings, and some people think that they are a blight on the face of the Tolkien legacy. And within this debate, one thing is often brought up, whether or not the book's author, J.R.R. Tolkien, would have liked the movies. Today, I want to answer that question to the best of my abilities and then talk a little bit about why we ask that question in the first place. So let's start in the best place possible, the words of Tolkien himself. Folks have pretty much always been chomping at the bit to turn Tolkien's books into a movie, and this was no different back when Tolkien was alive. And the first real attempt at adapting it came in 1957 from three American producers. They proposed a massive three-hour film with two intermissions that would use a combination of miniatures, animation, and live-action footage to tell the entire story of Tolkien's epic. And and initially, it seemed that Tolkien was not outright against this idea. In a letter to his publishers, he wrote, As far as I am concerned, I should welcome the idea of an animated motion picture with all the risk of vulgarization. He admits that this is in part because he's a little low on cash, but he also seems to believe that this proposed adaptation could in no possible way be worse than the 1956 BBC radio adaptation, which was apparently not very good. Tolkien seems to have despised the 1956 radio Radio adaptation, and unfortunately, it is considered lost media, and I want very, very badly to find it. However, this initial eagerness didn't last long, and as soon as he was provided with notes on the actual story that they would be trying to tell, he immediately had qualms. He said, The present script is rather a compression, with resultant overcrowding and confusion, blurring of climaxes, and general degradation, a pullback towards more conventional fairy stories. But even with that, he said that he was quite prepared to play ball if they were willing to adjust the script to be more towards his liking. However, Tolkien was only further let down upon receiving the full storyline treatment from its author Morton Grady Zimmerman. Tolkien says, It seemed to me evident that he has skimmed through The Lord of the Rings at a great pace, and then constructed his storyline from partly confused memories and with the minimum references back to the original. Tolkien goes on to tear the storyline to pieces, critiquing Zimmerman's compression and change changing of the storyline, his desire to add cliché magic, like hypnosis wherever possible, and in particular a scene where the hobbits are munching on ridiculously long sandwiches. I imagine this looking a little bit like Scooby-Doo, and uh, frankly I would really like to see it. Tolkien's problems with the script seem to boil down to this. The failure of poor films is often precisely in exaggeration and in the intrusion of unwarranted matter, owing to not perceiving where the core of the original lies. So essentially, Tolkien believed that Zimmerman lacked a fundamental understanding of what The Lord of the Rings was and what made it so unique. This proposed adaptation lost its legs not soon after this, probably in part due to Tolkien's disapproval of its storyline, and it was fully abandoned by 1958. Other than this, Tolkien didn't have any other serious dealings with filmmakers other than a brief interaction with John Borman's ill-fated script in the 1970s. And to all you boreheads out there, worry not because someday I will be addressing the John Borman script because it is wacky to say the least. It is very near and dear to my heart, and I have aspirations of someday bringing it to the big screen. So keep an eye out for that in the future, and you should join my Patreon so that I have enough money to make that happen when it happens. But anyway, in terms of the Borman script, the only real interaction we have of Tolkien and that script was John Borman assuring Tolkien that the film was going to be live action, something that Tolkien seemed pretty set on at that point. Now, with this information in mind, we cannot draw the conclusion that Tolkien disliked every potential Lord of the Rings adaptation. In fact, he seemed pretty open to the idea at first, it was just that the Zimmerman treatment of the story was pretty much a mess from the get-go. But this does tell us a little bit about what Tolkien was looking for in an adaptation. He was very, very attached to what it was that made The Lord of the Rings so unique. The Lord of the Rings was not meant to be a thrilling, magical adventure fairy tale. It was a deeply complex exploration into a fully developed secondary world. It was something that spoke to a much deeper, much more human and mythological sense of magic rather than just Gandalf hypnotizing Frodo and Sam and hobbits eating ridiculously long sandwiches. 
Tolkien wanted someone that respected and loved this story as much as he did. And that is, I believe, most of what we can glean from his personal words and letters, but we can also look at the words of his family. Of course, as many people know, the Tolkien estate, and in particular Tolkien's son Christopher, did not like the Lord of the Rings movies. The family was not involved at all in the filmmaking process, and they declined meeting Peter Jackson in the first place. Christopher Tolkien claimed that they eviscerated the book by making it an action movie for young people aged 15 to 25. In a slightly more level-headed interview, Tolkien's grandson, Simon Tolkien, outright said, No, uh, I, I don't think he would uh, would have enjoyed watching, watching the films, but to be fair to Peter Jackson, I don't think my grandfather would have enjoyed watching any films of his books, because if you create a completely imaginary world, if you actually watch a, a, a film of it, it's, it's a limiting process, mm -hmm. and it's never going to look like what you imagine it to be. And I think that Simon Tolkien really hit the nail on the head. Despite his initial openness to the concept, I really don't think that there is any film adaptation of The Lord of the Rings that Tolkien would have liked. But to figure out why that is, we can look back into Tolkien's writings. If you've been with this channel for a while, you probably know what source I am going to pull out here, because I probably quote it every, like, three videos or so, but now we're going to talk about Tolkien's essay on fairy stories. In this essay, Tolkien explains his views on fantasy as a whole. In contrast to popular thought of the time, he makes a very clear distinction between fantasy and fairy stories or fairy tales. He believed that good fantasy developed what he called a secondary world. The writer of the story acted as a sub-creator under God, the primary creator, and was to develop a world so complex, rich in details, and well thought out that the reader could lose themselves in inside of it and begin to believe that this secondary world could be real. With this in mind, it is clear that Tolkien's preferred method of conveying this fantasy was with the written word and not drama, which he considered to be incapable of creating true fantasy. Now, when he talks about drama here, Tolkien is specifically referencing plays or stage productions. Tolkien lived primarily in the first half of the 20th century, so while he would have been familiar with films, they were still kind of getting their footing and were not yet considered to be part of the true literature canon. Plays, however, were regarded as part of this, something that Tolkien was not particularly happy about. He believed that drama was fundamentally hostile to fantasy. In Tolkien's eyes, fantasy required truth, but the very act of acting, of standing up on a stage and pretending to be something else, was inherently not truthful. If fantasy created a secondary world within our world, the primary world, then drama that attempted fantasy took that a step further. Drama has, of its very nature, already attempted a kind of bogus, or shall I say at least a substitute magic, the visible and audible presentation of imaginary men in a story. To introduce, even with mechanical success, into this quasi-magical secondary world, a further fantasy or magic is to demand, as it were, an inner or tertiary world. It is a world too much. To make such a thing may not be impossible. I have never seen it done with success. He thought that the suspension of disbelief required to think that the costumed people on stage were fairies, or that neat light tricks were magic, was too much. He believed that it was not true fantasy. Of course, whether or not that is actually the case is to be debated, and as someone with a degree in theater, I am, I am inclined to disagree, but that's a topic for a whole other video. But for the sake of this video, that is very important information to know. Now, it should be acknowledged that stage plays and films are very, very different mediums, but when it comes to Tolkien's fundamental problems with them, it's not that different. The fact is that we know that that's Orlando Bloom in Colored Contacts in a Wig. We're likely aware of the fact that they didn't actually cut off Elijah Wood's finger for this scene. We know that Andy Serkis probably didn't just go really method to become Gollum. I think that compared to the stage, films do allow for a slightly easier suspension of disbelief, but they still do inherently require us to create that inner tertiary world. And for a man like Tolkien, who lived and breathed these stories, I don't think that any film would have ever managed to capture the magic that he put into his pages. As he said, fantasy is a thing best left to words, to true literature. 
But now this brings us around to whether or not this matters. Tolkien's likely distaste for the Peter Jackson movies is something often brought up by people that are trying to disparage the Peter Jackson movies. And while these people are definitely working with a morsel of the truth, I think that they're missing out on the much larger picture. A lot of people like these movies. They are a pretty good adaptation of The Lord of the Rings. And the fact is that without them, we would have a lot less Tolkien fans. I personally discovered the books entirely because of the movies, and those movies are a fundamental part of why I'm here talking about Tolkien today. And I hate to say it, but Tolkien is dead. And while these stories were once so fundamentally and beautifully his, now that he's gone, they've passed on. And now I like to think that they are within all of us. And while we can appreciate what made these books so unique and special, we, with our modern minds and perspectives, can also appreciate the movies for what made them so special. There are a lot of things that we might like that Tolkien didn't, like traveling, or the Dune books, or the French, or Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings movies. And while it's important to keep in mind the opinions of a book's author cannot and do not dictate how each individual reader absorbs the story. Stories are forever changing for worse and for better, and the Peter Jackson movies are just one step in the long, long journey that the Lord of the Rings will take throughout our culture. Now I know this may be kind of a hot button issue, so I would love to hear what you guys think in the comments. Even if Tolkien probably wouldn't have loved the movies as a whole, what parts do you think he would have appreciated? Let me know. Give this video a like if you got something out of it, and subscribe if you want to come hang out here with me every week. If you'd like to chat with me a little bit more on Discord, or you would like access to an ad-free, downloadable backlog of my videos, you should probably check out my Patreon, which is available for as little as $2 a month. The link is right down in the description, and any help that you can provide on there is greatly appreciated. Thank you all so much for watching and supporting this channel, and I hope that you all have a very happy, hobbity day.